So as of yesterday, while yeah. you were recovering from your latest episode with a LaGuardia Airport hamburger on the floor <laughs> and Miles Simmons was sitting in, we were talking about this and the perception was that the Broncos had lost a tug of war with the most dysfunctional football operation over the past several years in the NFL, which looked horrible. Yeah, what was this all about, Broncos. right? Horrible for the Denver Broncos. So D'Amico Ryans chooses the Texans, and the day begins to unfold. So this is one of the very fascinating subplots of Sean Payton to Denver. Because on the heels of the report landing that Sean Payton is going to Denver, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network, which is partially owned and operated by the Broncos and all of the other teams, he works for the Broncos indirectly. He said that the Broncos spent Tuesday trying to convince D'Amico Ryans to go there instead of Houston, and only after it was abundantly clear that Ryans was not going to alter his plan did the Broncos pivot to Sean Payton, and they got the deal done. Now... The Broncos vehemently disagree with that to the right. point where multiple reporters have had this story, and I've talked to a source with knowledge of the situation in Denver, and that source was as emphatic and upset as I've ever heard this source in the 20 years that I've been covering the NFL. It didn't happen. It's a complete fabrication. I have no idea where this came from. There's been no communication since last week with D'Amico Ryans by anyone, directly or indirectly, agent or Coach, owner or front office, not even through players, back channels, intermediaries, nothing. We moved on from D'Amico Ryans as of last week, period, end of statement. And the whole thing to me just becomes uh, unique and rare because you've got somebody on the NFL payroll working for an operation that is owned by the 32 teams directly at odds with one of those teams. And that team is pissed. All that team is pissed. Now, you know, teams get pissed at reporters all the time, but it's one thing to be pissed at me. You don't control me. You don't pay me. You can't touch me, although you kind of can through NBC, or at least you can try. This is more direct. This gets awkward. And this is another one of those, will we ever really find out the truth about how this showdown plays out? But Rappaport's dug in with his reporting, and the Broncos are dug in with their position. And there's no gray area here. The Broncos have taken such a strong position in response. No communication of any kind, direct or indirect, through intermediaries interme interme or anyone else since last week. And the other report being, basically, they, they scrambled yesterday in a last-ditch desperate effort to get to Miko Ryans. And only after that happened did they go to Sean Payne. That makes for – look, if, if Rappaport's report's true, and I'm not here to arbitrate, or mediate, or otherwise litigate those two reports. But if his report's true, they had one hell of a Tuesday. Think about it. They spent Tuesday morning <laughs> trying to beg D'Amico Ryans to come to coach their team, and then they, they fire up the engine to get a deal done with the Saints, fire up the engine to get a deal done with Peyton. That, that's just one hell of a busy day. The, I, I suspect they needed multiple adult beverages by the time Tuesday was was over, if that report is true, because that is one full ass day, Chris. It's it's hard for me to, to when I first heard it to wrap my head around that and think that was true, you know. And then I, I just started doing some digging myself. I mean, I started to text some people that I knew might know some things about the situation. I. I I never got the sense from people I know in the situation that, that that was real, all right? Again, I'm not trying to sit here and say Ian Rappaport, he does a great job and all of that. But, you know, one, it doesn't – just just as a guy that follows football, it didn't make sense. I'll just say that right off the bat. I mean, D'Amico Ryan to the Texans, I mean, I think we all knew that for the last five or six days that that was going to – that was kind of going that way. I don't think that was big news yesterday, right? So we all had a feel for that there. And then – as I said, you know, a little earlier, and I think you, you've kind of heard the same thing here, I, from everything I've known from, from multiple people here is that it went from Harbaugh then right to Sean Payton. Didn't work with Harbaugh, right to Sean Payton this weekend. So I, that's where, you know, again, not saying I totally know here, but I know some people that know some people, and uh, that's, I certainly didn't seem to, to get that side of the story when, it, when, when I started digging. 
I almost feel like just thinking back over the past few weeks and the way that everything developed, because we're in a position where we're constantly watching and assessing and assimilating. I feel like it started Peyton. It actually started Harbaugh, kind of shifted to Peyton, right. went back to Harbaugh. Then, as of a week ago, Ryan's was their guy. Right. And then they found out Ryan's was choosing the Texans. Exactly. Back to Harbaugh. Right. Back to Peyton. So it's just this weird kind of wave that happened. They started with the big names. Then they realized maybe we'll go with the up-and-coming guy. The up-and-coming guy says, sorry, I'm picking the Texans instead. Then it's back to the big names. And it was Harbaugh, then Peyton. And they just finally decided. I, they're never going to tell us the truth here. But – I just think they they decided yesterday we look like buffoons. We have got I, I would agree with to, that. We have got to drag a whale into the boat, not just a, 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 a you know a, a marlin or a little shark. We got to get a whale, and we got to land that whale because it looks like we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I I, I would say that too. It d definitely has that look to it. A little bit of like, wait, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there, signs of dysfunction, blah 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 blah. And you're starting to go, damn, Broncos, what the hell? Who are they going to hire here? I mean, you know, interviewed quite a few people and just got no sense of where it was going. Um, but I think in the end, they, they got it right. They, I don't care what the compensation is. You know, I know it's a little expensive. They got a top-notch, awesome coach. And, you know, I, I hear, you know, what you said earlier, too, when people go, oh, he only, he's only won one Super Bowl. Like, they freaking grow on trees. Like, oh, he's a, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, just easy. Like, oh, okay. I mean, come on. That's a, it's, it's, it's just a dumb comment to make. You know, winning a Super Bowl is not easy. It's the NFL. It's the most even league in all of the world's sports. There's nothing that's made more even than that. And then not only been in the Super Bowl, but knocked at the doorstep of the Super Bowl a whole bunch of times as well. And again, I know that's not winning the Super Bowl, but relevance and having a team that's at the top of the league in that conversation all the time, it does have some, you know, there's some tangible, real you know, value to that. And that's where Sean Payton's amazing. And that's going to change the dynamics of the AFC and the AFC West for sure with him in that division. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.